So when I go and make a video recording for obviously for a voiceover, I tend to record it three or four times or something or maybe more. I think the last time or the longest time I've ever recorded is probably going to be 10 times because I want to make sure nobody's ears bleed when they hear me talking and they're thinking that I'm from fucking the troglodyte tribe or some shit when I, I make up points and whatnot. So, but this one. I'm going to stay with the first recording, which is this one, obviously, and I'm just going to go for it because I think I have enough knowledge on the subject to kind of smoothly make a recording and not have any issues at all. If you haven't watched some of my earlier Blacklight videos, I'm not talking about the gameplay. I'm talking about the discussion topics on the death of Blacklight Retribution and what kind of created the downfall that it's seen in the last three or four years and its inevitable demise then I will link that in the description below. I will put the most recent one. Um, you can watch the one before that as well, but the more recent one kind of addresses more topics and is definitely more researched so that I could put straight facts up instead of my opinions and light research and knowledge from the game. But this video is not going to be negative at all, um, which I know is surprising considering I've talked so much shit on the developers of Blacklight and Blacklight Retribution. And no, they didn't come out with some update or something saying that they're going to fix the game. Nothing like that. But I want to talk about why Blackout Retribution was one of the best FPS games of all time. If not, I mean, free-to-play FPSs, I think that this is probably the best free-to-play FPS in its prime, of course, is what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about what its current state is or uh, around the parody patch and whatnot. So before I really get into the video, I am going to be opening a Discord specifically for Blacklight Retribution. So I know my Blacklight videos, my talk videos get way more views than anything else. So hopefully it'll reach a large enough audience where I can actually set up a community. And this will mainly be a server to set up, um, obviously, a community for Blacklight so people can, you know, meet and greet other people who play it and be able to organize lobbies for play, onslaught, everything that hopefully kind of works now and then also so people can give advice share their builds of their guns and you know anything you can think of blacklight wise i do understand that blacklight retribution has an official discord and i am in it currently but from the looks of it there's almost 2,000 players and maybe five ten people talk about blacklight or even talk in any of the chats at all compared to the massive number of people that are in it uh, most people play different games or don't communicate at all, so that's the reason why I want to make a new one for people who actually play Blacklight. Of course, it's not just for Blacklight. You can talk about other stuff or whatnot, but mainly Blacklight, still active players. So with that being said, I'm going to get right into the topic. So let's start with the one thing that obviously sets it apart from any other game, uh, FES game, and that is, well, I mean, a major mechanic. Of course, Blacklight uh, Blacklight, Black Ops has like the, the, the pings, the wall pings and stuff that shows you through walls and like trackers and sensor darts or whatever else they have. But Black Retribution has HRV and that allows you to see where people are on the map. It allows you to devise strategies to, you know, be more prepared with things that you actually know where your opponents are at all times. It's kind of like uh, if you had on Call of Duty where the maps, you would constantly get a ping with a UAV if both teams had that. So you know exactly where they are, what they're hiding and what, you know, what they're doing. This allows you to have a, a more even kind of fight in a sense, as long as you both use HRV at the right times. Um, I think it adds more depth to the game. A lot of some people don't like the wall hack sense. Um, I mean, that's essentially what it is. You can see through walls. There's the HRV cloak that you can carry on your personal item, which I think is a was a horrible idea considering it took this balancing in that was in the game and completely just dumpster fired it. And since there was no balance, the actual HRV cloak itself, you know, with the cooldown, how often you can use it, it became like some broken item that people use and people whine about all the time because it's just annoying. But like I said, no negative. So let's talk about this a little bit more. The HRV ping kind of, in a sense, made the game, it obviously set it apart from any other FPS game that I've played personally. If someone has something similar, just let me know because I have no clue about anything else. But like I mentioned, it allowed for a more equal play style so you can't hide certain places. You can't camp in corners without people knowing. There's little things that you can do so you can get out of that. You can put an HRV, you know, uh, the stationary cloak 
and then you could use a cloak on your character so that people can't see you and they can't see you in HRV, but that's another story. But this allowed for a more level playing field. It helped to deter people from camping um, and they could still, you could still camp and you still try to pick them because they can see where you are. So they can, you could try to devise strategies, devise where to aim your shots, um, where to lay down the depot items like airstrikes and stuff. If people have a huge group of people are just camping with sniper rifles and allowed for more depth in the gameplay and more equality uh, in a sense, not like taking high level players and making them equal to low level players, but making it so that you're not getting constantly camped by people sitting in corners and whatnot, which I personally enjoyed a whole lot because I hate when I walk around a corner and some dudes blended in laying on the ground. It's just annoying. And that was something that made the game unique and made it stand out from any other FPS game. And that's was one of the greater features of the game. Um, and the next thing, which is pretty obvious is the gun customization. And if you haven't seen the gun customization in blackout retribution, it is amazing. You can take the majority of the guns. There's a couple guns that you can't fully customize, like the tactical SMG or the compact SMG, I think it's called. The anti-material rifle. Um, some of the secondaries, like shotguns, you could still customize with different barrels and stocks. But this allowed for almost infinite customization. Oh, thousands and thousands of different customization options across the board. There were, you know, like 10, 20 different options for each slot. Like you had a muzzle, a barrel, magazine, ammo type, stock, scope. I think that's everything. That pretty much covers everything across the board for all the different guns. Um, and what this does is it first allows for a complete customization to your liking, which allows you to craft the perfect weapon, even more in depth than other games that say, oh, well, you can have this grip or that or this. This gave you the choice to choose exactly how much recoil uh, compared to the base model of the gun, how much ammo you have, if you want a faster magazine reload or a slower one with more ammo or just a lighter one that allow you to run faster, a stock that gives you better spread when you're hip firing, when you're aiming, when you're running, or a lower recoil. Um, and then the muzzle will also allow that to have the, the different sprays, the different ranges. You could turn a heavy assault rifle into a DMR with long range because you still have the high damage base so you could put on the silencer the long barrel and the better uh stock to give you less recoil and then you could put a sniper scope on it boom you have an extremely long range heavy assault rifle that has made 50 damage a tick of course there are guns that work better for that but if you wanted something like that that was fully automatic that you knew you could control then that would be your option you can make for that assault rifle smg tactical assault rifle you have obviously the heavy assault rifle you have lmg lmg recon there are so many different guns that you can play with and customize completely they didn't need guns like call of duty where you have like oh this is the ak-47 you could put like these couple attachments on it this is the m4 this is the scar this is the acr it didn't require that because people could take the base guns and turn them into whatever they wanted and that was an amazing mechanic that had so much depth when it came to your loadout and it was extremely fun to be able to craft whatever you want so next, the gun mechanics worked pretty well. Obviously, this goes hand in hand with the customization. It took your ability to control how much recoil you have, your spread and whatnot. Instead of having like this set gun that, you know, had this spread, this recoil, this damage, you can add like this, this to change it a little bit. Every item you put on your gun would change so many different stats on it. You know, the recoil, obviously damage. The damage was another huge thing. You would change the recoil of the gun to be lower and you would have a silencer on it, which would give you maybe longer range, less recoil in exchange for lower damage. And it allowed for a good balance, but obviously now there's some issues with balance that really need to be worked on, but obviously we're not gonna be seeing that anytime soon. But overall, the gun mechanics felt solid. They didn't feel janky, they didn't feel gimmicky. The, obviously, again, now they're a bit different than they were before. Definitely not an improvement in my eyes considering balancing issues and whatnot but in the prime like i'm talking about everything's going to be in the prime of the game it was solid gunplay that felt reactive and responsive all the time and it was amazing so the last thing i kind of want to touch on is two different things one the depot system and two the hard suits because they go also hand in hand so in the game you didn't have kill streaks in a sense 
you had the ability to earn points, which you then had to go cash in at a depot. You didn't just automatically have this item in your inventory when you get X number of kills or X number of points. You could get points from doing a whole plethora of things, getting assists, getting kills, getting morale boosts and capturing points and doing objectives and whatnot. The morale boosts were kind of like if you were suppressing a target or if you're with your teammates when they get a kill. I don't actually know what triggers it completely, but that kind of seems what um, what actually triggers it is being around teammates when they get kills and trying to get kills with them. But overall, the point system worked well and you could go to the depot and you would set up a predisposed loadout for your depot where you could choose what you could get. You know, you had health refills, ammo refills, airstrikes, different rocket launchers, different deployables like turrets, AI units, the hard suits. Um, there are some balance issues that need to be worked on. I'm going to make another video on the what could be improved on Blacklight from, you know, in its prime and now that would make the game a whole lot better. There's so many different balancing issues with Depot. People sit by the Depot and buy ammo crates over and over again, just spam grenades down hallways or, uh, you know, heal themselves over and over again. Easily, they kill one person, run to the Depot, heal. Kill two people, run to the Depot, heal. And there's plenty of issues with it, but it did add another mechanic that allowed for you did not have to carry certain items on you at default. But when you did buy some items, you know, like the hard suit, it would replace your secondary or the rocket launcher replacing your secondary. Um, and this kind of leads me into the hard suit thing. The hard suits were hard to get in a, I mean, hard suit, <laughs> but it's not that, not the reason they called that. You would go get X number of kills, assists, objective points, and you could buy this mech suit. This was Titanfall before Titanfall, pretty much in a very limited fashion that could have been expanded on to make the game amazing. But of course they didn't do that. They didn't do that now. They added one more hard suit, which was okay. Kind of felt like a, it's basically a light hard suit. But you would get this indicator, mark on the ground where you would want to drop the hard suit. It would come down, fall from the sky. You could get into it, but you were vulnerable, of course. There's no shield like in Titanfall. You don't get protections. Um, you can hide behind it, of course, but it will still take damage when people shoot it if they're trying to kill you before you get in. The entrance is quick. You can hack other people's hard suits to get into it, but it takes like five, 10 seconds. I haven't actually measured how long it takes to get in, but if you want to, if you kill someone, manage to kill someone before, it's not like it's their hard suit um, and only their hard suit. It's just a hard suit. Anybody can get into it, your team, the enemy team, obviously you. You can't set it to autopilot mode or anything like that. Um, I feel like that would kind of be awkward just spawning because someone would just buy hard suit, save up, buy another hard suit and just drop them both or something. Um, and that would be, you know, odd, but, but there was a good balance to hard suits. A lot of people like to call them noob suits and just complain and complain and complain when hard suits come in, but they're actually extremely easy to destroy. The cost of a hard suit is the main rhino hard suit, which is the heavy one cost 1300 CP, which are the points, combat points. And you could buy a 400 CP rocket launcher with enough ammo to destroy a hard suit. There are so many different counters. You can blow it up easily with rocket launchers. There's a couple different rocket launchers, airstrike it. Stun items will completely disable the hard suit for a short period of time. Not like turn it off, but will stick it in place, slow it down extremely and turn off its weapons. And you could use that in conjunction uh, and go hand in hand with someone using a rocket launcher. You use like stun shurikens or a stun grenade or a stun mine, stun it for a few seconds and then just blow it apart. It has weak points on the hard suits which allow for more damage from light arms. Uh, it's not nothing major. It's not like you're going to destroy a hard suit with one magazine or anything like that, but it does add uh, an easier way. In the hard suit, you can't use HRV, which is another huge thing. So you can't tell where people are. So it's a lot harder when someone shoots you from the back to turn around and find them. There is a thing that you could put on um, as a tactical gear, which is called an HRV ping, hard suit ping, which, you know, obviously the name implies it's HRV, but in a short ping that shows you where everyone is for a quick like half second, which I honestly don't recommend using. It's really not that great. Um, well, I mean, if you're going to choose any of the hard suit things that go uh, that work well with hard suits, that would probably be the one, not the battle mode or the repair kit, which you use to repair anything pretty much. But that kind of is mostly used for hard suits. You would have to replace your entire tactical slot just for that. And I don't think it's really worth it. 
Um, there's another thing you can do to counter hard suits. Again, more balanced. You can use fire against it, which will do minimal damage to the actual hard suit itself, but will kill the driver of the hard suit. So boom, now you've killed the driver with a mint condition hard suit that now you can take and you can use flamethrower. Uh, you can use flame rounds in your, uh, your regular gun. You can use the breech loaded flame round, which does, I think you need two of them to kill someone completely in a hard suit. But there are so many balancing things with it. Yes, the hard suit's powerful. It has a rail gun on the, I'm, I'm gonna keep talking about the Rhino hard suit. That's what I'm gonna use an example. It has a rail gun that can one shot people, but it takes a while to turn it. And there are so many counters to it that it's so easy to destroy and people just run out. They just hear, and it's so loud. You can tell where it is. People just run out in front of it with like a pistol and expect to be able to take it on when they die. They're like, oh, that's broken. When there are so many counter options, there's not a good enough tutorial to really get players acquainted with it. But once you figure it out, it's so easy to counter them. And I rarely get killed by hard suits. And when I spawn in hard suits, when I have someone on the other team that knows what they're doing, I might get like two or three kills. But then when there's a team that just tries to shoot me with their regular rifles and are just no idea what's going on, I can get like 10, 15 kills. And it's disgusting, but there are so many counter options to it. And that added a, another level to the gameplay, kind of like Titanfall, except people don't use it as often. But this was a balanced item that added fun and excitement to the game. That's really all I have to talk about. On this video, I will be making another video, like I mentioned, about what can be improved in Blacklight Retribution to make it great again, make Blacklight great again. So if you did like this video, go ahead and drop a like down below. If you did not, you know what to do. If you do enjoy these kinds of videos and you want to see more videos like gameplay and other talks, hit that juicy subscribe button and that little notification bell, and I will catch you on the next one.